Hello, this is Ron Saboya, and I'm the managing partner of Stratus Innovations Group, and welcome to our Cloud 101 webinar series, Cloud Computing Security. And the purpose of this webinar is to hopefully answer the question that we get asked a ton, which is, gee, cloud computing, is that secure? Is my data secure? Is it private? And, uh, and we hope that this webinar can answer that at a high level, um, let you feel a little more comfortable about what the security model is, and to be comfortable that uh, your data is secure and private in a cloud environment. So let's begin. So if you think about, uh, you know, as you think about cloud security, it's important to understand, you know, how, uh, how organizations use technologies and why do they use technology. So typically an organization will need various pieces of technology to transact business on a day-to-day -day basis. It could be internal at, uh, uh, functionality like electronic mail, document management, colla document collaboration, customer relationship management, Salesforce automation, how you sell to and prospect customers. It could be some sort of database or web server uh, that uh, is customer facing, how customers can order from you or do customer service from that aspect of it. And in the cloud model, the idea is that those services are provided, you continue to use those services, but those services are provided from a cloud provider and by default, that data that resides for all of that resides in the cloud. So then the question, of course, is, is that data secure? So let's cover what those levels, uh, different levels of security are that cloud providers provide. At the lowest level, what you'll see is from a uh, data center facility security, which is, you know, who can physically get into um, that data center. So they have physical controls in terms of badge readers, uh, retina scanners, uh, fingerprint readers, all kinds of different aspects of that to make sure that you know, um, whoever gets in are the right people in order to get in. You'll see armed guards and things of that nature where um, it is just as difficult to get into these data centers as it would be to get into, say, Fort Knox or something like that. Um, access controls on once you're into the environment, who can access what areas as well as who can virtually access what data from that aspect of it. Constant video surveillance um, within the data center and exterior to the data center as well. And also significant background checks are done on the data center operational personnel to make sure that there are no issues with, um, you know, potentially any operators, um, you know, creating issues from that nature. So the next level up, if you're thinking about cloud security, is um, at the network level. So the data is traversing across the Internet, and the network, the, the network at this level, then, is the Internet. Um, so what is the security level uh, that exists at that level? Um, you know, working your way from the outside of the organization in, um, they have uh, physical devices called edge routers. And the purpose of the edge router is to kind of hide all of the... Um, all of the hardware, all of the functionality that is residing in the data centers, um, kind of hiding that and keeping that out of the snooping eyes of uh, people that are trying to do some bad things to the environment. So we'll implement edge routers to kind of implement that. The next level of layer of security, if you will, they have multiple layers of firewalls. Firewalls simply say it constantly monitors the data that is coming in and out of that environment at, down at the packet level and essentially says, is this type of data allowed into this environment? Is this type of communication allowed into this environment? Um, if it is, it lets it pass, and if it's not, it just, uh, just deletes it. That, that type of packet doesn't go any further. Um, uh, also, they have intrusion detection and vulnerability scanning. So intrusion detection is physical agents that are constantly monitoring at that network level. Are there agents that are trying to spoof in or data packets coming in that say, you know, trying to um, uh, determine the configuration of the environment, trying to find resources and things like that. Um, you know, so there are agents that are constantly running that are, if they detect any of this, they fire up an alert and say, hey, we want to make sure you're aware of this, and that way the operations team can dive in very, very quickly about what that intrusion is. Vulnerability scanning is sort of from that aspect of sort of um, proactive scanning to make sure that there are no uh, vulnerabilities, there are no security holes uh, from that aspect of it. So constantly doing tests of, you know, is this uh, up to the best practices and the most common standards uh, and uh, uh, from you know, from a security perspective, do we have any vulnerabilities from that aspect of it, and constantly scanning for that. 
Um, the next level is basically that channel um, that data resides or basically travels over um, is encrypted, and it's encrypted on both sides. So you do this on a day-to-day -day basis today, and you use that same technology today when you're doing online banking or bill pay. Um, or do any of your wealth management sites or anything of that nature. So the encryption is there's a key that the service server will have that any data that is being sent from the server or received to the server, that data is encrypted with a key that these servers have and that these clients have. And that key de-encrypts data so that only the client and only the server can really read what exactly that data is. If someone was to jump into the middle of that um, communication back and forth, the data they, you know, even if they were able to obtain the data, what they would see is a, you know, a, a hodgepodge mess, mess of, uh, uh, of data bits because it really doesn't mean anything because it's encrypted. And then finally, you'll see uh, dual factor authentication which is essentially um, not only do I use login ID and password, I might use a fingerprint read, I may use a, a badge with a PIN. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different ways of doing uh, dual factor authentication. So a different level of at the network level to ensure that the person that is um, accessing this and, uh, has authorization to do so. At the next level, you're going. Uh, you'll see the uh, security level from an operating system and application level. And Microsoft has done, in my opinion, has done a really, really good job of this in, in a piece of technology called Directory Federation. And Directory Federation essentially says instead of the cloud saying yes, this person can access this piece of data or this service, any type of request that comes in over the internet to the cloud and says, you know, I'm Jane and I'd like to get access to uh, my email. The cloud simply says, oh, I know Jane's organization, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer that request or refer that request, federate that request back down to Jane's environment and let the directory in Jane's environment, so the directory in that organization that says who has access to what, who can log in, from that aspect of it, say, does Jane have access to this? And that director will come back and say, yep, Jane has access to it passes that, uh, that message back, and then Jane gets access to that environment. So you're going to see a lot more coming out in this uh, fashion from Directory Federation. It's providing a significant level uh, of functionality and providing a tremendous level of security because it's deferring back to your environment of providing that security as opposed to putting a copy of accounts um, and access control in the cloud. Access control and monitoring following dovetailing that uh, directory federation is essentially saying that with that directory federation, I can you know control at a, a low level who has access to what, and I can monitor and audit who has access it or who specifically tried to get access to this. So you can do a really good audit trail from that aspect of it. Um, finally, er, um, also the uh, cloud providers have done a really good job from a uh, malware and uh, anti-malware and anti-spam perspective of keeping what's called the um, you know the the signatures um, up to date, so that any of the latest pieces of malware, malware being viruses, um, any of the latest malware signatures, uh, you know, uh, or any of the spam new spam techniques, all of that is being um, addressed really really quickly and in a real robust way. Um, by these cloud providers and making sure that that environment is constantly being updated every day for any of the new threats and uh, new spam techniques. Patch and configuration management of the organizations that we, the enterprise organizations that we've consulted to over the past many, many years, the, the single biggest issue that causes security breaches or has the potential to cause security breaches in these enterprise environments is due to patch and configuration management. Patch management is simply saying that there is a security patch that has become available because this um, potential security hole was found and we need to update this, this operating system or this application as quickly as possible. And so patch management is just simply saying when I get the patch, I make sure I get that deployed so that at that security hole is closed up. Configuration management is all around that server, I'm only going to let certain type of services run on it. If it's a web server, I'm only going to do web serving, but I'm not going to have print servers running, and I'm not going to have a, uh, a you know, file and print servers running. Uh, so you, you shut down the various pieces and parts of that server you don't need and from a, configure, you know, from a configuration perspective. So the net is 
that the cloud providers are really implementing uh, best in class and best practices around patch and configuration management so that they reduce, dramatically reduce, the probability of having a security hole in their environment. And then finally, secure engineering, you're seeing the cloud providers doing a, a, a much, much better job in the engineering up front. So the best way to ensure a secure environment starts by when you develop, from an application development perspective, of the applications and the servers themselves. So Microsoft has implemented something called SDL, or Software or Security Development Lifecycle, that essentially says when they're developing a server product, an operating system, um, what are the tools and techniques and processes processes and frameworks that they can use to uh, dramatically um, reduce the risk that that piece of software has a security hole in it. So if you eliminate all the security holes or get as close to eliminating them as possible, you've done a really good job improving the security. And then finally at the data level, dovetailing on that directory level type of aspect of it, you have access control as who, exactly who has permission to access this piece of data. Um, you can do that at the user level, user level access and authorization via those access control lists. And then finally at the data, file and data integrity level, they do a tremendous job of scanning to make sure there's no viruses um, or any malware embedded into files. Um, and there's no issues with the data that would cause any security type holes. So the net is, if you think about it, these organizations are investing a significant amount of, uh, uh, of capital up front where they're investing at least a half a billion dollars or more of investments to ensure the security and privacy of your data. And the question I ask is, is that environment probably you know, as secure, if not more secure, than, than your environment just simply because we don't have an organization, you know, a typical uh, commercial sector and even public sector organization doesn't have that level of investment to, to, in that depth of layers of security to keep their environment, to, you know, uh, their environment secure. So um, based off of that, uh, it, it's typically you'll see what that level of security is probably as good or if not better than what you can provide. In terms of next steps, uh, so hopefully that made sense. Again, it's a very, very high level. Next steps, we have a couple of webinars on cloud computing and introduction to cloud computing, and also the financial business case of cloud computing. Um, also, uh, if you want more information on security, we have several white papers on our website, and a lot of white papers from uh, Microsoft's, uh, uh, Microsoft's their, their global foundation services, um, which are the core of their online services environment. Um, next steps also, if you're interested, 30-day, no cost, no risk pilots so you can test this environment. We have cloud assessments that allow us to uh, uh, help you uh, to say technically is this a good fit from a cloud perspective. Uh, financially, is the, is the business case there to support moving to a cloud? And then also security, is this going to be, is this going to meet and exceed our security um, requirements? What are those security requirements? And let's dig in very, very deeply on how that's solved with the cloud model. Finally, you can contact us, info at stratusinnovations.com or www.stratusinnovations.com or phone us at 614-939-1912. That concludes our webinar on uh, cloud computing security, and we hope you enjoyed uh, the, this webinar. Hope it was informative, and we thank you for your time. Have a great day.